Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial on how you can use ID masks in Blender. Now if you don't know what ID masks are, they're basically black and white images or masks that Blender will generate for you on render time. And using this ma these, these masks you can isolate certain portions of the render. And as you can see here, this mask is just for the skin of this cute little minion here. And uh, in the compositor, what I can do is I can just change the color of the skin and not everything else. So when I change the color of the skin using that mask, it doesn't affect the eye or the environment. And uh, I have also generated a separate mask just for the uh, for the pupil of the eye, and changing the hue of the eye will not, will not affect the skin or the environment. So uh, to start, uh, I have the starter file open, and uh, the first step when you want to create an ID mask for an object in Blender is select the object, and under the Objects tab in the Properties panel. And under relations, there is an option where you can enter a pass index. Now, a pass index is it's a number that will be assigned specifically to this particular object, and we'll use the number assigned here later in the compositor. So, I'll choose a random number like uh, 14, and we'll use the number later in the compositor. And the next step is under the render layers tab, we enable the object index under the passes panel. It's important that we keep keep this checked. If we don't if we don't keep this checked, Blender will not generate the the mask that we want on render time. But we also want to generate a mask just for the pupil pupil of the eye. But the method we use will be different. Once we selected the eye, we go to the materials tab. And the reason we go to the materials tab is because the pupil and the cornea use different materials. So what we do is we select uh, everything that's part of the pupil and we assign a, a specific number to it too. Under the options panel, there's also a field for the pass index and we'll, we'll enter the same number this time. So we'll, we'll enter like uh, 12 for each of those. Now because uh, the three materials share the same number, they'll be part of the same mask. But we also have to enable the material index because we, we enabled the pass index under the materials tab. So the next step is to render it and uh, it will generate the mask for us. So I'll pause the recording for now. Okay, so uh, the render has finished and uh, I'll maximize the compositor. And uh, the first step is to add an ID mask node. And to do that, we go to the add menu, converter and ID mask. Then we'll connect the index OB to the ID value here. And we'll, we'll enter the number that we assigned for the minion, which was 14. And we'll also check anti-aliasing so that it gives us smoother edges. And when we view this, we get the mask that we want. We'll also do the same for the eye. So we'll, I'll duplicate this node, change the index to 12, and connect the index material to the ID value. And when I view this, I get the mask that I want. So now we can use these two masks to isolate the eye and the body from the, or the, from the render. And a fun example would be changing the color of the minion. So, so I'll add a hue saturation value node. Then I'll plug the image into the image of the node. And as you can see, uh, now if I change the hue, it changes the hue for the entire thing. But as soon as I plug the mask to the factor value, it will only be limited to the minion, to, to the skin of the minion, and not everything else. So I can simply change this to, do, to what I want. So uh, around here we'll get an evil minion. So I like that uh, thing. So I'll duplicate this uh, again, and uh, this time I'll use the mask for the eye to isolate it from the entire thing. And now it only affects the eye and not everything else. So I can change the color of the eye as I please. So as you can see, uh, using this, these two masks, you can isolate the, the two portions of the render and uh, uh, change them as you please without affecting everything else. And uh, so to finish it off, I'll add a, a split viewer node. I'll delete this viewer node and I'll connect this one to the top and this one to the bottom. So that we get what the before and after, if you will, of our minion and evil minion. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope it was useful, and uh, 
I'll put a link where you can download this blend file for Dominion. And uh, bye.